and nighttime lighting conditions. And these are the results for the lab videos that were analyzed by YOLO v3. Each circle represents measurements that were taken from a different height, with each ring representing a specific distance from the camera, and each sector representing a different angle. The green indicates that the average detection confidence for that position was above 0 0.8. And similarly, the yellow represents that the confidence value was between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, and the red indicates that the average confidence was below 0 0.6. We found that the position of the person does affect the confidence level of the object detector and can result in a change in confidence of up to 0 0.7, depending on the position of the person in the frame. And here we can see the same measurements in tables for the other videos. Each table represents a different set of videos taken in a different lighting condition, with each row representing a different distance and height configuration, and each column representing a different angle that the person stood at. The green, yellow, and red are the same as on the previous slide. And we have found that across all the various lighting conditions, the same position-dependent behavior in the object detector, with a confidence range of approximately 0 0.7 in the different videos. In addition, we found the same behavior in faster RCNN, with a confidence range difference of between 0 0.35 and 0 0.45, depending on the lighting conditions. So to conclude this analysis, we found that the confidence of an object detector is dependent on the person's distance, angle, and height from the camera. In addition, since object detectors have a minimum confidence threshold, if a person's position results in a confidence measurement below this threshold, then in theory, the person would be able to avoid detection. In addition, as part of this analysis, I also analyzed the effect of the camera quality on the results. And I did this by downgrading the original 1080p footage to 720p as well as 480p. And we have found that the same behavior persists across the 720p footage as well as the 480p footage. The confidence uh, range is between 0 0.7 on the 720p footage and between 0 0.6 on the 480p footage. So in conclusion, the camera quality does not impact the presence of this behavior and indicates that the varying confidence behavior is independent of the quality of the camera. Now I'll review the second analysis that we performed. We analyzed the previously demonstrated position-based confidence in areas of significant pedestrian traffic. And this was done by utilizing public footage from three global locations such as Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo from a 24-hour period. We took this 24 hours of footage and divided it into six consecutive four-hour videos in order to analyze varying times of day and lighting conditions. The objective of this analysis was to determine the average confidence of an object detector over time as a function of the location in an observed area. For each video, we fed one frame every two seconds to an object detector and then calculated for each pixel in the frame the average confidence of person bounding boxes that landed on the pixel. I repeated this with five different object detectors, as well as three videos from three locations around the world, using Shibuya Crossing, Broadway, as well as Castro Street in San Francisco. And due to time constraints, I'll only present the results from YOLO v3 and Faster RCNN. So these are the results for this analysis. Each of the six rectangles represents a different video from a specific global location and records for each pixel on the screen the average confidence of person bounding boxes that landed on the pixel. The green indicates higher confidence and the red indicates lower confidence. We found that in each video, the average confidence of detections varies according to the location in the frame, with average confidence varying between 0.25 and 0 0.92, depending on the time of day and the location in the video. In addition, this varying confidence behavior persists across various lighting conditions. For example, in the Shibuya crossing footage, there is a pole close to the camera positioned at the left third of the bottom half of each rectangle. We believe that this pole reduces detection confidence in the area around the pole by obscuring people that stand behind the pole and its location can be easily visualized just based off of the lower confidence measurements 
of the area around the pole. Also, we found similar results in footage from Broadway and Castro Street, as well as footage that was observed by Fastor or CNN. So, in conclusion, the confidence of an object detector when detecting a person is dependent on the location of the person in the frame, with some areas demonstrating stronger confidence and some areas demonstrating weaker confidence. These stronger and weaker detection areas can, vi can be visualized in a heat map, which indicates the object detector's performance on the given area. In addition, these findings are independent of location and object detection model. Now I'll present our novel evasion attack that we call Tiptoe. We found in our previous analysis that it's possible to discern knowledge of varying object detector confidence based on a person's distance, angle, height, and location in a camera frame. Using these insights, we want to construct a path across the scene with minimal or no detection from an object detector. So before getting into the methodology, I'll define a few terms as well as the problem space. First, a scene is a physical area that is observed by footage fed to an object detector. The scene is stationary and does not change. Second, a confidence heat map records for each pixel in the scene the average confidence of bounding boxes that land on the pixel over time. And similarly, a detection heat map records for each pixel the number of bounding boxes that landed on a given pixel over time. The tiptoe attack leverages the varying confidence levels recorded in the confidence heat map, which records in cell IJ the average confidence of bounding boxes that landed on pixel IJ in the observed scene. We reduce our objective of finding a path across the scene into a graph-based problem. Initially, we have the confidence heat map, which represents the average confidence of each area of the scene in a matrix-based pixel format. We then reduce the pixel-based heat map into a graph-based problem space. Each pixel is represented by a node in the graph with two-way edges to its cardinal neighbors. The weight value of each node is the average confidence measurement stored in the confidence heat map. This reduces our problem of finding an optimal path between two locations in a pixel-based scene into a graph-based optimal path problem between two nodes. In order to avoid detection, the attacker will want to reduce both the maximum confidence of the path nodes as well as the average confidence of the path nodes. Now, we'll review the threat model. The attacker wants to construct a path between two points in a scene that is observed by an AI-based pedestrian detector, such that they can cross the scene with either minimal or no detection. We, they have access to a confidence heat map and detection heat map in order to understand the location-based behavior of the pedestrian tracker for the given scene. On the other hand, they don't have access to any adversarial perturbation methods that would allow them to print a pattern enabling detection avoidance. In addition, they don't have access to machinery like infrared light or lasers that would directly influence the um, object detector's behavior. The only factor that the attacker has under their control is the path that the evading person takes through the scene. Now, I'll present the methodology of Tiptoe. Tiptoe is a modified version of Dijkstra's algorithm where an optimal path between two nodes is the path that crosses the lowest possible maximum confidence node. Since each path has at least one node with the highest weight or confidence on the path, we use Tiptoe to find the path with the lowest such node. This guarantees that any other path through the scene contains a node with either equal or greater confidence than the path that is uncovered by Tiptoe. In this example, the lowest cost path from the start to the end node is through the top node, which is the path that will be returned by Dijkstra's algorithm. This gives you a total path cost of 20 with maximum and average node costs of 20 as well. On the other hand, we want Tiptoe to find the path with the minimum max node, which in this case is through the middle nodes, since the max node crossed on that path has a, cross of, has a cost of 10, and every other path between the start and end node must pass through a node with at least a cost of 10. This gives us a more expensive total cost of 50, but a lower max cost and average cost of 10. This would be useful for if an attacker is trying to stay below a detection threshold while traversing a path through the scene. The inputs to Tiptoe are the confidence and detection heat maps, 
as well as the starting and ending coordinates. We perform Diaxtra according to a modified weight node update function. The highlighted calculation records for each point in the scene the minimum max confidence that is crossed in order to get to that point. This contrasts with Diaxtra's weight node update function, which minimizes the total path cost to a given point. This calculation allows us, at the end of running the attack, to find the highest confidence value that must be crossed in order to get to each point. We can then iteratively print the optimal path in a similar way to Diaxtra by starting from the end node and working backwards to the starting node. So to evaluate Tiptoe, we utilize the confidence and detection heat maps that we generated from pedestrian traffic in our previous analysis. For each confidence heat map, we chose 10 random start points and 10 random endpoints, giving us 100 possible start and path combinations. We calculated for each heat map the average max confidence and average per step confidence of the paths that were generated by Tiptoe. We then compared these results to direct Manhattan distance paths as well as random length paths between each pair of nodes. We repeated this evaluation with the five previously mentioned models and three previously mentioned locations. And I'll be presenting the results for YOLO v3 and FAST for our CNN. We found that Tiptoe reduces both the max confidence of paths as well as the average confidence compared to direct and random paths through the scene. These confidences are reduced by up to 0.1 and 0.16, respectively, on paths in Shibuya Crossing observed by YOLO v3, with similar performance for other locations, as well as other object detectors. So we conclude in this evaluation that Tiptoe reduces both the max and average confidence of a path across the scene by up to 16% and 27%, respectively. Therefore, it's possible for an attacker to manipulate an object detector's confidence by leveraging the location of a person in the scene. So finally, to conclude what was presented today, we first found that object detectors are sensitive to a person's position, or in other words, distance, angle, and height in the frame. This is reflected in the varying confidence levels of object detectors when given footage of the same person in different positions and is independent of model architecture, video quality, and lighting conditions. In addition, this behavior is present in varying detection confidence of pedestrian traffic in public areas, depending on the location in the frame that the pedestrian is walking. This is reflected in the varying average confidence in different areas of the scene. And we can view these areas in a heat map of stronger and weaker detection areas. And finally, we leverage these findings in the tiptoe evasion attack in order to construct minimum confidence paths through a scene, significantly lowering the max confidence and average confidence of paths through a scene over direct and random paths. So thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed my talk. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, questions. Hmm? Are you taking questions? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if they have questions. Anyone have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I think there's a microphone. Microphone? The, the microphone. Microphone stand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Here we go, slide 22. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's no problem. Um, no, actually, you make a good point. The exact um, behavior or the exact confidence levels was different between um, different camera qualities. However, what we wanted to make note of was that regardless of the camera quality, there were positions with weaker confidence than um, versus other uh, positions. Yeah. 
Yeah. What? Well, I think it's it's a scenario where the um, or behind the scenes, the attacker would have um, you know a certain level of of technological access to the uh, to the cameras. However, on the scene itself, we didn't want the attacker to have any uh, patterns that would uh, seem suspicious or any machinery like aiming lasers at the, like aiming lasers at the sorry. Aiming lasers at the camera. Okay. We're going to have to uh, wrap up the questions, but uh, he's going to step out back right over here for questions. If you are leaving, please exit out the back. Uh, we enter from the right side of me and exit out the back. But if you have questions, he'll be able to take it over here. Thank you very much. Great job. Hey, I got, I got something for you. Thank you.